Hi guys. Uh, so we are, uh, you know, come, kind of coming close to the end of, um, of intelligence. And uh, this one is uh, module 62, which talks about the, uh, some of the dynamics, um, you know, the high, high level intelligence, the, the lower level intelligence and uh, predictors. So today I'm just gonna go through about 10, 15 minutes of um, uh, some good stuff with IQ scores. And, uh, um, and maybe explain why your parents want you to do so well in school and why they say, listen to your teachers, because uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of good things come from being a good student and, uh, working really hard in school. So, uh, here we go. So today's notes are on module 62 see that okay there we go um and uh so they've done studies on intelligence and uh, they've done cross-sectional studies and longitudinal studies remember cross-sectional is at one time uh whereas longitudinal studies take place uh over many months or years uh in this case years because they're following they're following a cohort uh a cohort for a uh, long period of time and want to see um, if the intelligence uh, is stable, if it's going up, if it's going down. What they found out was cross-sectionally, uh, the older people tend to be less intelligent than the younger people. Um, and that's a quick one-shot look at uh, intelligence. The longitudinal studies say that, and remember these are the more accurate ones and they're definitely more expensive, harder to do but it turns out that intelligence tends to be stable uh, throughout your life. Like, you you know, just because you're older doesn't mean you're not, you don't have as uh, uh, high intelligence. Um, and it only until the very end does your IQ score drop significantly, um, usually because of dementia or um, some form of Alzheimer's. So, so here's where I'm better than you guys is the crystallized intelligence for most of you, and that's just because I'm older. Uh, <laughs> as you get older, it's like you accumulate knowledge. And uh, so I can't say for certain that I know more than all of you, but on average, like I know more than you because I've been alive longer and I've, you know, absorbed a lot more information. And here's where you're better than me is your fluid intelligence. This is the, as you get older, this goes down. And so your speed at which you reason and uh, the speed at which you abstractly reason um, uh, or how well you abstractly reason goes down uh, as you get older. So this is increasing as you go get older. That's your crystallized intelligence. So if you ask me what a word means or if I know some history or whatever, uh, I just happen to know more probably because I've been older uh, I'm, I am older, but fluid intelligence, you guys have me on that one because your, uh, your, the way that you reason is much faster than mine. Okay. By age four, uh, your intelligence is actually, um, pretty, not entirely, but I mean, it can go up and down a little bit, but by age four, they got a pretty good idea of how intelligent you are. And it's actually a good predictor at this point of if you're going to have really high intelligence. Now, if you got lucky enough to be born with uh, the right genes that make you intelligent, so you're in an AP class, that should mean something. Um, you're, you're probably of high intelligence just being in uh, an AP class. And on top of it, you're at Wheatley. So um, you're in a very uh, intelligent, uh, you have intelligent parents, your, your um, you know, hardworking parents, parents that care about you doing well in school. And so that is, it's not just to make money. It's not just to be uh, ridiculously successful in your job. Look at all the other things that go along with high intelligence. So they push you and push you and push you to do well in school. It's, you know, of course you want the better jobs, the more money, you want the higher education, the more education. But look at the other things that go along with high intelligence. Less Alzheimer's, less dementia, healthier lives, longer lives. Like, 
it's sort of a, a wild card of your, your intelligence is kind of a wild card. And if you get it, be grateful that you got it because not everybody does get that, that lucky, um, you know, roll of the dice. Uh, so, um, but it's why your, your parents want you to be intelligent is because of all these great things that go along with it. You know, it's unfortunate if you're not intelligent. It doesn't mean if you're not intelligent, you're not going to have any of these things. It's just the likelihood. It's an, it's a law of averages here. So if you do have it, this is, uh, much more attainable, uh, or much easily, much more easily attainable. Okay. So on the extremes, if you have an IQ of less IQ score of less than 70, that indicates an intellectual disability. So, um, and it doesn't mean like somebody who has an IQ of less than 70 has down syndrome. Most people with down syndrome have an IQ of less than 70, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, there are many people, more people that don't have down syndrome that have an IQ of less than 70. Um, it usually just means like a learning disability. Um, you know, maybe they're just easily distracted. Uh, so some form of autism spectrum disorder can, can also uh, have this, or you might be a savant, uh, which means usually you have one really great skill, like a cool, you know, remembering everybody's birthdays or having an idea of like what day um, of the week your birthday your birth was, you know, if they told you the date in the year, uh, they would know it. Um, but then they couldn't do anything else. Um, so an example of that would be Rain Man. If you ever saw a Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise, um, that's an example of that. So Down syndrome, uh, is called trisomy 21. That's, uh, that's an, ex that's an example of most people with Down syndrome have an IQ of less than 70, but not necessarily. Um, and then if you have an IQ of 135, oh, I should mention this. Uh, that number actually means something to, uh, criminals. If you, if you commit a crime where you could suffer capital punishment, like be put to death because your crime was so heinous. Um, if you are below 70, you can, uh, I think they call it cruel, unusual, cruel and unusual punishment. You can't suffer capital punishment. They won't, you know, I I'm not saying this in terms of like, <laughs> this is something that you have to think about, but. Um, it's, it's interesting to say that if somebody has an IQ of low, lower than 70, um, they can't, uh, put you to death. And secondly, um, if you have an IQ of greater than 135, that's considered a genius level. This was the example that I was talking before about the termites. Um, and so, uh, these are groups of people that just happen to do really well on IQ tests and they usually get all the benefits uh, here. Um, and it's, it's quite a great thing to have that. Uh, it's, you know, it's not something that, um, you know, like they had anything to do with most of the time. It's just like your genetics kind of, you know, if, you're, if you find yourself to be really smart, it's usually because of your genetics. It's nothing your parents, uh, you know, did for the most part, it's, you know, other than give you a sperm and an egg, um, and make you, that's really, uh, besides that, like, you know, they can kind of give you a leg up with a uh, good education and all the other stuff, but this is highly, highly genetic. So, um, and it is a good predictor of these things. So, um, all right. So you have your work cut out for you. I did, uh, see your scores on the multiple choice. I still have to read all the essays, the FRQs. So I'll try to get that back to you as uh, soon as I can. Um, thanks for getting those to me. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.